Hey everyone, I'm back. I don't know how long though. Uh, I know I've been gone for a hot minute and uh, I wanted to do this video just to kind of catch, you know, catch up with everyone, catch you up, um, show some hauls, show some of my whips. Um, I even have a finish. Wow, that's right. Your girl has a finish. And, um, you know, just, just talk about some things. The biggest thing is, however, for the first time ever, April of 2020, Soulful Stitching is hosting their first stitching retreat. I'm talking in third person. That's weird. Okay, so I'm hosting the very first Soulful Stitching retreat in Jacksonville, Florida. That is right. Beaches, margaritas, lots of fun. Okay, uh, of course, stitching. So, you know, um, I do not know the uh, total off the top of my head. And um, I will check in with Katrina, you know, get the definites and, and get back to you if you guys really need to know or want to know. Um, and what I'm talking about is how many slots are left because it's the first 50 people that sign up. Um, those are the first 50 people that are going to attend. I do know that once I opened up the retreat to other groups outside of Soulful Stitching, the registrations have started pouring in like you would not believe. So if you are interested, please get in your registration um, because as of today, I do not know how many um, and she could have got a lot more last night. Um, and so let's talk about the retreat. And yes, I'm about to drink something. Okay, because you know, we we always have our lovely people on Facebook and in our stitching community. You know, you just, you just gotta love them. So the Doubletree Hotel in Jacksonville has a policy that those of us who stay the night have to pay a $6 parking fee for every day that you're there. Yes, uh, uh, uh. don't wanna do it, got it totally with you. However, you have the choice because Hilton nor myself is in the criminal business, so we don't force people to do things. So here's your options. You can pay it, find some place else to park, or catch us next time. However, I don't want to hear people gripe and complain about the parking. You have the freedom of choice choose to do it or choose not to do it. But I'm not going to listen to, quote unquote, read, because you're not sitting next to me, a whole bunch of complaining about the parking because the invitation will be withdrawn. My first retreat, um, and the last thing that I'm going to do is attach my name to something that uh, is drama filled or you know just makes people uncomfortable. Any adult who has went on a vacation or has traveled understands and knows sometimes there are those inconvenience things that just pop up that you really don't want to be bothered with, but you do it anyway. And the parking fee just happens to be one of those things. Um, you know, just this, this is my first retreat. Um, and at the end of the day, it's not about one specific person. It's about all of us. And um, I'm not going to make changes. I'm not going to do any of that for one specific person. Um, you know, this is a retreat for stitchers. And Katrina, my um, cross-stitching retreat planner, um, has done an amazing job of getting this together. And just the thought of asking her to do one more thing is an absolute no, because I have grown adults who... Uh, just the thought of being inconvenienced just sends them in, you know, gives their heart palpitations, not doing it. So the second thing that was brought up too is the ages. The ages of the retreat is for grown adults who stitch. Um, also, teenagers, you know, because a lot of, um, of us have uh, teenage daughters or sons um, that actually stitch. More than welcome to bring them along. Um, it's just not open to little kids and babies. Um, you know, you see your precious 
365 days out of many years before 2020. And I don't believe that, you know, life is going to spiral out of control if you're gone for a couple days. Um, if it could, then I understand also that you can attend this year. Um, you know, but I just need to say that, um, you know, and I know people are like, well, why are you being so rough, Melanie? It, it's because several things. One is just in my nature. But two, over the last eight months that I really haven't been, quote unquote, active in the community, as far as you know, I've kind of held back in the wings, just kind of looking and stuff. Our community has changed a lot. You know, it, it went from being a lot of fun and amazing to uh, people being unkind and disrespectful and bullying and deceitful and, you know, just witnessed a situation um, with someone who is amazing, absolutely amazing, being harassed and threatened. And um, I'm... You, you just don't want to try that with me. You don't want to try to bully me. You don't want to try to come at me from left field or anything. So I'm just asking you to, you know, understand and know that nothing for the retreat is going to be changed for one specific person. The retreat is set the way that it is. Um, if there is something that is not pleasing to you or anything, then I totally understand that you cannot come. But I would advise you, uh, you know, with the, the nicest way that I can say it possibly, is do not in any way attempt to bring drama to this Jacksonville retreat. And with that being said, I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm um, looking forward to meeting a lot of people uh, finally offline on, you know, finally that I talk to online, offline. Um, and uh, I'm telling you, I'm looking for the one who knows how to do the sewing method. Because if I don't get the sewing method down before April, I am going to come and find you, whoever you may be. And I am going to get you to show me how to do the sewing method. I, for whatever reason, cannot get it together. I mean, like, whatever. I, I just have a hard time with it. And maybe someone who knows a lot of specialty stitches, too, because I generally stay away from patterns that are beautiful that have lots of specialty stitches because I just can't do them. Even with the designers who literally um, map it out detail to detail on paper, step by step, I still can't get it. I'm one of those people that have to visually watch someone do it and then I get it with no issue. So life update. Uh, first of all, you know, anyone um, in the stitching community that has family or friends in El Paso, Texas, or Dayton, Ohio, or you actually live in those areas, or you were visiting when it happened, um, my heart really goes out to you and your family. Um, you, uh, everyone, uh, has been in my prayers. Um, and, uh, you know, regardless how you feel about praying, I know that prayer works. Um, and, and so that's what I'm doing. I couldn't do a video yesterday because I was just a total wreck and just spent the whole entire day crying. Um, my family um, works with the public. Um, and so I made it my mission to make sure before my wife left, before my mother-in-law left, uh, I called my son in Tampa that they know when they enter their workplace, that they know where the nearest exit is. And I would advise you to advise family and loved ones too to make sure that they know where the exit is in their workplace because lots of us think and assume that it can't happen to us. And I know that those individuals that went shopping for school clothes or ran to go get milk or bread or whatever in Walmart and at the mall in Texas didn't think so either. And then the individuals that were just out for a night on the town hanging out, 
you know, catching up with friends they hadn't seen, having a date with their spouse that they hadn't had, didn't think so either. So just please make sure that any of you, your family, your friends that works with the public, that they know where the nearest exit is if something was to happen. Um, but again, my heart uh, really goes out to the victims and their friends and their families. Um, so <clears throat> with that being said, um, as far as my family is concerned, dude, like I'm never going to have anything really interesting to tell. I mean, because of the fact that you guys know already that all of my children have moved out and, uh, I'm just not interested in doing anything interesting. Like seriously, like my whole entire life has been built around diapers, formula, running here, running there, soccer practice, football practice, basketball practice, this and that, da 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 da, school shopping, ah da ah da ah. Not interested, dude. Like I wake up, and and most people say, well, what am I going to do today? I wake up and say, what am I not going to do today? And pretty much whatever it is. So really nothing exciting. We're doing good. Everybody's still working for a living. Everyone's still alive. I did have a little bit of a cancer scare. Um, my doctor was worried about my anemia and um, my bone marrow, but come to find out that was just simply an iron deficiency. So everything's good with that. My wife is amazing, awesome. My mother-in-law is great and awesome. Our puppies are great and awesome. My children are doing fantastic. Um, you know, I'm not sitting here saying to you that we don't have any struggles or, or didn't have any issues the time that we were gone, but they just weren't really significant about to harp about it. You know, whatever the issue is, we got it, we fixed it and moved on. Um, my son, however, uh, has become the vice president of the National Black Association of Accounting for uh, his college. He also got the opportunity to speak to a group of children or kids um, that came to tour his college. And one of the things that he said to me when it was done and we had an opportunity to talk is that he's not having children anytime soon. And I was like, yes, I did my job right on. So that that was that was funny. You know, he he said he was wore out. Uh, he had. Uh, taking the group of high school and middle school kids and was walking around. And uh, he just, he said he just had to laugh because he just remembers, you know, doing some of those same silly things, looking at girls and, you know, just being goofy with his friends and stuff, you know, when he would go on field trips and stuff. So he said it, it was just a reminder, but he did have a great time. Um, and some of the kids, you know, shared their heart with him about what they wanted to do, what they wanted to be when they grew up and, um, you know, or grow up. And, uh, you know, it, it was just amazing to hear him talk and, and sense the pride in his voice of having to, you know, do the speech and all of that. And my grandchildren are absolutely amazing. My youngest grandbaby though, Ava, really getting on my nerves. Yeah. Because every single time I call, she's on vacation, quote unquote, she's sleep. And, um, she's very diva-ish. So if, I called to talk to her and I'm FaceTiming and someone's eating in the background. You automatically know I'm not getting the attention. Whoever's eating is getting the attention. And then um, she's so diva-ish that there is a certain time in the evening that she wants um, her mom to put her in her bed so she can watch her show. And she does not want to be interrupted. So with Miss Ava, I have to make an appointment to speak to her. But uh, I don't know who she gets that from. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I'll just try to catch up with her in the next coming week. You know, uh, my da granddaughter, uh, Al Alana, and my grandson, Khalil, they graduated. So they're moving on to their next grade. And um, it was just so beautiful watching the graduation by um, uh, video because my, my granddaughter, when she got on stage and got her little diploma, she did a curtsy and... Uh, you already know I was a blubbering mess because I couldn't be there. They live in New York and I live in Florida. Um, so that was difficult. But other than that, you know, just nothing to tell uh, except great things, good things. Um, you know, just nothing's nothing, uh, nothing uh, serious or um, nothing to tell, you know. Um, 
So with that being said, let's talk about dips, honey, because that is why you're here. Let's get all in the stitchy business. Okay? Okay. So some of the things that I have worked on, and I totally forgot one uh, project, so you won't see it. Um, is I've just been catching up on a, a lot of my whips, um, you know, really, really uh, being sincere about getting a lot of my stitching done. Um, for some reason uh, here lately, the desire to buy really has not been there. I do have a little bit of haul and I did acquire a good bit of stash over the time that I've been gone. But dude, I can't remember all of that and I'm not going to look up for all of it. So what I did was found the most recent purchases and we'll show you those. But excuse me, my memory is as short as my hair, so that's not going to happen. But so let's get to it and show you some of the things that I have been working on. Oh, do I have them in here? You wouldn't even believe this. So. If you knew me from way back in the day, you know that I like to stitch on 40 count or above, 45, 46, you know, right? So one day I was stitching and all of a sudden I had to do this. And I'm like, I have 20-20 vision. I'm just tired. That's all it is. I'm just tired. No, I'm not just tired. Your girl has to wear readers. Oh my gosh. I know, right? A little dramatic, but just go along with it. Yes, I have to wear readers. So that's the other change. And I don't have them with me or I would have showed them to you. So yep, your girl has to wear readers. But the wild thing is I don't have to wear them to read. But I do have to wear them. Because I'm getting to the point I really can't see the holes on the fabric. And that's a hot mess. But we're not even going to talk about it. So the first project that's up is from Little House Needleworks. Song of the Seasons Mystery Sampler. And uh, if you know, I had did this. I had completed this one almost. Completely finished it. And when I got down to the bottom like the grass in the house wouldn't line up correctly and I was trying to fudge it as much as I could um, but it just ended up looking a hot mess so I scrapped the whole thing and redid it so this is what it looks like um now this is going to be a little bit yeah here we go so this is where I am at now and I am doing this on a um 40 count like um antique linen Yep. And um, I'm using all of the call for threads. Um, a lot of uh, Weeks Dye Works. So I'm actually using uh, what Diane called for. And you know that um, Little House Needleworks is my favorite designer. But I have fallen in love with someone else too. Um, her style is just, um, it's dope. I love it. I l absolutely love it. So the next project that I've been working on mm, here and there is um, by Modern Folk. And it is the Japanese sampler or Japanese alphabet sampler, however you want to call it. And I am using Victorian motto threads. And I am stitching over one on 28 count even weave. And um, the colors that I am using is uh, Victorian Glow in the Dark. And this is what this looks like. And then I'm also using her... Um, Orchid Special, and um, that's this color. Okay, 
the next one that I'm working on, of course, you know, is my baby. And uh, I say this every time, but I even still with her have those moments where I do want to work on her and then I don't. And you already know, Sky Blue Street. And i um, using all DMC, working uh, 40 count linen, white. And uh, this is how far I've gotten on that. I have actually moved into the bake shop now. Um, the only thing that is left to do uh, that I keep forgetting every time I work on this is I keep forgetting to do the, the other window right here. So I got to go back and do the window. But now I have moved into the bake shop. Um, so let me show you this. Let me show you this again. Okay. Let's take a look at it for a second. And then let me show you on the cover, just so you kind of have an idea. Uh, this, where? Okay. This is the bake shop. This is where I'm at right now. I'm getting all up in here. So then I'm going to be moving this way and then be done. Okay. So that's where I'm at. So, um, you know, since the last time that we have talked, I did make significant progress on it. And, um, you know, now that I've actually pulled it out and got my hands on it, I actually might start working on it again today uh, when I have some time after work or uh, actually I might have some time before work. And so I might just go ahead and throw some stitches in it. And that um, is just using regular DMC and white 40 count um, linen. Okay, so the next um, that I'm working on, this is a part of my haul, is uh, one that I got from Little House Needleworks and it's called Season of Growth. Let's see. And um, I'm actually stitching this DMC uh, over one on 28 count. Um, coffee dyed or tea dyed even weave however you want to say it and this is where I'm at so far and just so you can kind of see okay so that was one that I had uh, went and acquired Next, we have, oh, this is a part of the haul, and this is my new love. I love her designs. Uh, she is absolutely amazing. I do not know how to say her name, so I will not say her name, and I'm not going to butcher it. So, she is the, um, the French designer, and um, this is Sunflower Farm that I'm working on. I totally love her stuff and I'm going to get a couple more. Uh, there's um, the Lavender Field, I think it's what it's called. Uh, don't quote me on that, but. Um, so I'm stitching that on 28 count over one, just coffee dyed even weave. Uh, I don't know, um, Chelsea and Priscilla have really, um, made me fall in love with this to where I really now don't even buy too many um, linens. Um, I just coffee dye the even weave and stitch over one if I'm looking for that, that the small stitches. But of course I do have stash of different fabrics if um, you know it calls for a different color or something like that. Um, so this is kind of where I'm at right now is um, working on this working on that and um, I love her I mean I absolutely love her designs she'll never place little house needleworks but I love her and excuse me not place replace and um her pattern just simply calls for 
DMC. So no specialty stitches there. I mean, no specialty uh, hand dyed floss there. And then um, the next one that I'm working on is another one, um, another designer that I, I think is fantastic. And um, this particular design is called Romance in Paris. And it is by Shannon Christine. And um, I got this off of Creative Poppy. So this is what this one looks like. And um, this is being done on 28 count even weave. I dyed it myself with writ and I used um, teal, I believe. And, um, I'm, and I have to do full stitches on this because um, beads have to be added to it. And so this is how far I have gotten on this one. I did add some beads, uh, as you can see there. So I like this. I love this one too. Um, she's amazing. And um, what I'm working on is the first block with the woman. And so as you can see, I'm working down um, the side there. I love just the postcard feel of them. Just, I love it. I love this design. And I keep telling you I love these designs. However, I'm taking forever getting them done. But we won't talk about that. Though. And again, uh, her work just called for DMC. No um, specialty, um, no over dyed uh, threads. And then uh, the next one is... Um, Another one that I love too, and this is um, by Rosewood Manor, and it's called Lee's Leeds Sampler. And um, I went to my local LNS and purchased this, and um, they did not have the sulky threads that um, the project calls for. So Susan, the owner, actually helped me find some alternatives, which I think is making it look fabulous. And some of the and the alternatives that I'm using is um, Splendor, Splendor thread. I'm using some DMC variation, and I'm using a Wheat Dye Wheat's Dye Works as well. So I'm using this blue and Splendor. And this is another blue. Uh, beautiful green, beautiful green. And so what I'm thinking is now when I do a project that calls for silks, um, if Splendor, if I can, um, you know, find Splendor threads that um, match it just as well. I probably will use this because Splendor is amazing. I really, I really do like it. Um, I know I used it on another project when, when I was first starting out on stitching on linen and just love the way it felt. Um, at that particular time, it was like a black and a gray. Um, but again, this is the DMC variations uh, that I'm using. And then I am using something called monkey monkey grass uh, for weak style works. And, and and even though it's not the call for sulky thread, it's still making it look beautiful. And this is where I'm at so far. Um, and I am stitching this over one on 28 count as well. So unfortunately, I mean, maybe putting it up like that you might be able to tell but you just see how the colors looks great and it was very uh different for me um because I'm really not the type of person that um likes to deviate from the original call for colors I I, I don't like doing that and I know that's kind of crazy because as a stitcher you know the one thing you learn to um, to do is become creative. So I was a little hesitant, but then once I got it home and I started stitching, I'm like, yeah, okay, I can, I can rock with this. This isn't, this doesn't feel too crazy. So that one, it was nice. And, um, I actually went 
on my birthday again. I always make it a point to go uh, to the cross stitching shop on my birthday. That's just because it's, it's something that I like to do. Um, I don't like jewelry. I don't like, um, you know, people to give me, buy me clothes or anything like that. Um, I like stitching. I like books. Um, I'm also a big happy planner, so I love stuff like that. So um, my wife knows every single year. She really doesn't even ask me, well, what do you want? Because she already knows. Let's go ahead and make a trip, make a plan to go to um, my local needle workshop. And so um, while I was there, this is a part of the haul too, something you guys haven't seen. Um, unless you follow me on social media, you've seen it. Um, this is um, the Louisa B. Snow Sampler by Little House Needleworks. And um, I absolutely fell in love with this. Absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and one of the great things is Susan was so kind enough and she actually just gave it to me for my birthday. And I, just, just awesome, awesome, awesome. And so again, this one I am stitching um, on Coffee Dodd uh, 28 count even weave, but I am stitching it over one. And this is how much I have uh, gotten done so far. And I am using the actual call for threads. I'm using the um, color, color cotton. Yes. Yes, I am. But there's one that I had to change because um, they didn't have it. And so the color that I had to change was um cotton candy no no actually i'm wrong okay so clay pot is one of the called for threads and that's going to be for the flowers down at the bottom um let me see here cypress that was a, a called for called for one too and that's that's what that looks like that's going to also go down with the flowers um c shelly is another one and of course, down there with the flowers as well. And um, <laughs> I think this is Caterpillar. Yes, Caterpillar is another one called for. And then we have Roasted Marshmallow. That's a called for. And then we have uh, Blacksmith Blue. So what I had to substitute out was they were calling, calling one for Rosy Glow. And Rosy Glow, she did not have. So what we did was, of course, um, you know, did a color match. And we found out that Dolce um, would, Dolce de Leche, I think that's how you say it, um, actually would work out fine. So we just used that. <clears throat> And so that's a beautiful one that I really, really love, really love. Okay. And then next we have, um, no. so you guys already know the deal with this. Make a long story short. Oh, where is it? Okay. Make a long story short. I had started this one, really had gotten far and had to redo it. Why did I have to redo it? Because I was cutting some threads, didn't pay attention to what I was doing and actually cut the fabric. And I know for those of you who are like amazing uh, sewers and different things like that, you were like, oh, okay, we'll just patch it, this and that, uh-uh, OCD. Um, I, I just, uh, I, I, no, um, I just went ahead and redid it. I knew or I would know that the the jumble uh, would would have been there and that just wasn't my thing. So I just went ahead and redid it, but this is where I'm at right now, redoing it. And also another reason why I wanted to redo it too is because some of my stitches just looked kind of bulky and a hot mess and I didn't like it. And so I, um, you know, just decided that it was the perfect time, perfect time to go ahead and redo it. So that's where I'm at now. And I'm gonna keep on working on her. And I did um, go ahead and buy the other ladies as well. <clears throat> so that's where I'm at 
in Celtic Winter. Um, another one that I'm working on, and this was a, just a recent purchase because I had seen it and I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to have this. Have to have it. And um, it is the um, Sleepy Hollow by Ty Tiny Modern. And um, I'm taking my slow, sweet time on that. I not even finished the frame. And um, it calls for DMC, so that's what I'm using. And again, I'm using my own hand dyed um, DMC, um, hand dyed even weave, uh, 28 count over one. And so, as I said, this is where I'm at. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm just working on the frame right there. It's a little difficult to see, but um, when I'm working on it, you know, I can see it fine. And it'll, you know, be a lot better, of course, when I start adding, like, the orange and the white of the ghost and stuff like that. So I did um, purchase that and uh, working on that one. And then um, the last one, there's some other ones that I worked on too, guys, but I just grabbed a few. Um, as you know, another person that I really have loved to kitten stitcher is uh, a Shakespeare peddler, and I did get her, and I just didn't print them off. I bought her um, Jenny Bean Christmas um, sampler, and also bought her Jenny Bean Halloween sampler. When I saw uh, Southern um, Joe, uh, Southern, you know. Joe Southern, I can't remember, Southern Stitcher, Southern something. Um, sorry, Joe, don't be offended. Uh, it, 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 I seen her Jeannie Bean um, Christmas, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And so I had to have it. But this is one that I got from Shakespeare's um, Peddler, and it's called Hannah Carter, 1838. I love that one as well. Amazing. And so, um, again, I'm just using DMC and... Victorian motto thread. This is where I'm at right now. And um, and I don't know why. I'm sitting here looking at it and I'm like, why did I skip A and just move on to M? I don't know. But that's exactly what it looks like. And as you can see, it, it calls for um, Gloriana and Needlepoint Silk. I wasn't going there. So I just basically got black DMC and then to match the gold color that she was um, calling for, I just got, just chose this one by uh, Victorian Motto Thread. I just thought that those two colors would look great together. And, and so that's what I'm doing for that. And um, now to kind of wrap it up, that's pretty much most of the whips that I had worked on, um, you know, since I've been away from you guys. I had worked on a little more too, but those are the ones that I had um, pulled out. And um, of course, if you follow me on social media too, um, you will see pictures of, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've done as well. So as far as haul is concerned, um, again, I went and purchased um, Drawn Thread. I got the, the Sunnyside Sampler. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. I um, also purchased the New England Winter Sampler by Little House Needleworks. I freaking love this. And I cannot wait to start this. Um, probably around... Thanksgiving is what I'm going to do this one. Then I also purchased um, Needleworker Sampler by Brenda Gervais. And she is an amazing artist as well. I love her too. And I am probably going to get the Weeks Dye Works um, that hers calls for. Uh, just... Uh, for me, Brenda Gervais, I just, um, 
it just has to have the the over dyed threads for me for me and I'm not saying anything to anyone who doesn't use them. I'm just simply saying that when I look at this, this just screams hand dyed threads and and I have to, you know, get the actual threads to go to that one. Another one that I purchased was Colonial Homes um, by Little House Needleworks. Uh, another one that I had been coveting and I was so happy I found it was Farm Life by Little House Needleworks. And then last, oh, last but not least, had to do it. Summer ABCs. I already have fall, winter, and spring. So I have, of course, had to get summer. And then while I was there, I just went ahead and got the called for DMC threads, um, no, I'm sorry. I just went ahead and got the DMC alternative um, for that. So I'm all ready to go besides getting the fabric. And then the other one that I I just absolutely love, love Little House Needleworks. Diane is just an absolute amazing designer. Love her stuff. Um, pa um, Patriots Row, I got that one. And then, of course, while I was there in this particular case, um, I just went ahead and got uh, some of them she calls for DMC and then um, some of them she called for Crescent Colors. But I just went ahead and did everything in DMC. So I went and hunt, got those. And then something else that I uh, did is I'm not, you know, big on sewing or anything like that. I just don't have that type of talent. I like to just stitch and call it a day. And, um, of course, if it's something that I really want to frame, then I will. Um, I, you know, just learned from other stitchers over the years, um, you know, how to do it myself. And, of course, it's not going to be professional or anything, but it'll be appeasing to me. Um, and so, with that said, I went and had some tags made, uh, Soful Stitcher. Um, and they're just simple iron-on tags that I put on the back of my work um, after I've completed it. Nothing fancy, but I just thought that they were really pretty. Um, and because I'm not going to stitch my initials or anything like that in my work, I just, um, you know, iron those on. And it's kind of debatable where my wife felt I should put them on the front. And I was like, no, I think I'm just going to put them on the back. So with that being said, um, let me show you my finish for uh, 2019. This is one called Always and Forever, and I'm sorry I forgot the uh, chart, but you can see it on um, Instagram. Always and Forever by Little House um, Needleworks. Um, this is done on 45 count antique. No, this is ivory. This is ivory. And um, when I first started stitching on uh, 45 and 46 count. Uh, you know, kind of newbie and um, <clears throat> was asking, you know, is DMC going to be okay? Is it going to be too thick? And a lady had recommended that I get something called Tudor Silk. And Tudor Silk is, um, you know, it's at a decent price. It's about uh, $8 um, a, um, a skein. And, um, but it's half the density of DMC. And so that's why she recommended. Now I am doing, um, freedom. I am so bad with names, dude. Uh, the big Sal, the big Liberty one by Lila studio. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I'm stitching that on. 45 count and I'm using one strand of DMC and it's working out amazing. So, but either, either way, you know, this was, this was real beautiful, um, silk. It's a blue called Northern Lights. It's Tudor silk. They don't really make too many colors that I know of now to where you really can like do an alternative for a whole entire project. If I'm correct, they only have like 119 colors. Um, but uh, they, at that time, and this was several years ago when I bought um, this, 
uh, it was about $7 and something to scan. It, it could have went up by now. But just to kind of show you anyway what I'm talking about, this was a completed project. And then this is how I just iron it on the back. And then I put it in my acid-free bag. Acid-free bag. Um, because I don't frame everything. I don't turn stuff into pillows. I'm just kind of your... I don't know, boring stitcher, I guess. I stitch it, I put it away um, and allow my children, um, you know, to see them years to come. And that's pretty much it. Unless it's something mm, that I finished and I really want to frame it and this is how it is. It's in an acid-free bag. It goes in an acid-free box and uh, there she lays. And um, I just jot it down in a notebook of mine. Um, what day it was started, what day and year it was finished. Um, so with that being said, um, that's pretty much where I am at. You guys really haven't missed a whole lot, as you can see, really nothing to tell. Um, oh, and one thing I did want to mention about the retreat, we will be doing a freebie table. We will be doing um, a smalls exchange. Um, also Katrina is going to be our supplier, our vendor. She's going to have pretty much anything and everything that we can think of fabric patterns, threads, um, you know, maybe even buttons, beads, whatever, you know, um, so we'll be able to get lots of things from her. Um, and I'm thinking about doing a display table too, to where people can bring magnificent pieces that they finished and just put them on display. And, um, but I don't want it to be a table where we just go walk by it and who and I, I want the individuals who do, um, bring their work to just kind of talk about it a little bit and take us on the journey, um, that they went on when they were stitching it. So I may not even do a display table. I actually might do a display exhibition to where, you know, you guys share with us and talk to us a little bit about, um, your finished pieces. Um, you know, because a lot of the pieces that I've seen at other retreats just, by film, not that I went there, um, just amazing. And it would have been great to um, hear the stitcher talk a little more about, you know, their journey when they were stitching the piece or whatever. So, um, you know, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, you know, you guys just stay amazing, stay safe, keep stitching, keep loving people, you know, keep doing what you do. And uh, most importantly, enjoy and lift up and love the craft that we all are so talented and blessed to um, have a part of our lives. Take care of your families and your children. And uh, until next time, and again, I'm really looking to see a lot of you at the retreat. So uh, stay blessed. Bye-bye.